Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the Home Depot Center here in Carson, California, serving the Southern California community. Tonight, Oscar De La Hoya's Golden Boy Promotions and Don King Productions are proud to present an evening of world-class professional boxing for your entertainment. These bouts are sponsored by Tecate Cerveza Con Character, Affliction Clothing, Southwest Airlines, Low Fares, No Hidden Fees, sanctioned by the California State Athletic Commission. This bout is brought to you by DeBella Entertainment and Tournament of Contenders. At ringside, the three judges scoring, Jose Cobian, Steve Morrow, and Nobuaki Urutani. And inside the ring, your referee in charge of the action, Dr. James Jen Kin. And now, ladies and gentlemen, 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC Welterweight Championship of the World. Fighting out of the red corner, wearing tan, official weight, 147 pounds. Professional record, 33 victories with nine knockouts and six defeats from Portland, Oregon, the former junior lightweight champion of the world, Stevie Two Pound Forbes. And fighting out of the blue corner, wearing red with black, official weight 145, one half pounds. A perfect professional record consisting of 22 bouts, 22 victories, including 19 knockouts. From Winter Haven, Florida, the reigning, defending, undefeated, WBC welterweight champion of the world, Andre Berto. Thank you. Let's go, gentlemen. Let's go. Let's go. Mouthpiece. Mouthpiece. Gentlemen, obey my commands. Low blow here. Let's go. Shake them up. Good luck, fellas. Forbes remembers coming into the ring against Oscar De La Hoya right next door in the soccer stadium. We're in the tennis stadium and being booed, but being cheered on the way out. Who gets the cheers tonight? Berto's promoter, Lou Devella his handlers admit that Forbes is the slickest fighter he's been in with. The difference in hand speed is immediately apparent as Berto is able to drive Forbes into the ropes and land the combination. Uh, uh, he's, Berto stepped on his foot. And that's why he stumbled back into the ropes. <laughs> Berto seems eager to face this challenge against a slick boxer to show that he's more than just a pretty face boxer, and a big punch. Move. Larry seems to be very anxious to get in and impress everyone. Is it, they have similar styles to some degree with their hand position and their height, but this, the speed element belongs to Burley. He's much, much faster. But I think the right hand that he's shooting at Forbes is not going to land that easy, I don't think. Forbes is rolling the shoulders to avoid being hit with the full power of the right hand. Let him go, let him go, let him go. This part, Forbes says that he wants to fight Berto inside, believing that with his veteran skills, he'll know more about inside fighting than Berto, and that there's a better chance that the young fighter will make a mistake on the interior than Punch if he were to fight him at arm's out. length. Punch him, come out. Well, let him go. The image of Berto in boxing is he's a very explosive fighter who explodes and then after that he normally has to take time to rest and regroup. And that's what you're going to see Ford try to take advantage of as, as the fight goes on. Forcing him to fight when he finishes those explosions. 
Right hand over the top by Forbes. Berto comes back with a body shot and a quick left hook upstairs. None of those punches even grazed Forbes. I'm glad you pointed that out, Larry. I'm going to say a lot of fast punches, very exciting to the crowd, but very few clean punches have landed by either boxer. Both guys are showing tremendous defense. Punch it, come out. Punch it out. Go. Punch it, come out. Punch it, come out. Drop boxer, break with him. Just right there, and they were both That's exactly what Forbes is talking about when he says Berto might make a mistake. Roberto caught him coming in. Stop boxing, hold on. With his favorite punch, mm -hmm. the right uppercut. Right, and shook him for a moment. Forbes has never been down, much right. less stopped. Sharpen up yourself, all right? Keep your hands sharper, all right? Left. Get a little closer and get inside. I want to get a little body work, all right? Make sure you touch his body a little bit because you're trying to shoot that right hand over the top. Relax. Look. All right. Hey, look here. He's getting tired already. He was, he's tired of holding already. Here we see Forbes coming in, being aggressive and throwing a shot, which was partly defected by Berto, and then Berto came back with a counter right uppercut, which is his favorite punch. You heard Floyd Mayweather Sr. say in the corner that he thinks Berto is tired. Um, as hard as he trains, that seems unlikely, but he does put so much effort into all of his punches that it's not impossible that he could get tired in a long, hard fight. Box numbers in round one were very close. Berto 12 out of 55. Forbes 13 out of 64. You know, I'm, I'm speaking so much about Berto's hand speed, but Forbes' hand Drop speed is not too bad lead. himself. Not as fast as Berto's, but it's very good. Well, tremendous motivation for Steve Forbes tonight to try to put on a show. I mean, just as this is a litmus test for Berto fighting against a guy who put in a spirited effort against De La Hoya. It's a litmus test for Forbes to prove that he can beat one of the guys who has already earned a reputation in the welterweight division despite his youth. Big left hook landed for Forbes. And the short little right as they were breaking up, a veteran knowing it ain't over until the clinch is over. This is turning out to be a very good, sharp, crisp punching fight. And it's the type of fight that a judge will have to be very careful to watch because both of these guys roll their shoulders and they catch a lot of punches with their right elbows. So a judge have to watch very careful to see who is actually landing clean punches in this fight. And they get just a vague go sense, Emmanuel, that Andre Berto might be a little shocked at Steve Forbes' hand speed in the yes. first Punch round and a half. I do believe that. And I agree that uh, he hasn't had to deal working, with working. this yet. So let's see how he does. The obvious adjustment would be to try to work harder at beating Forbes to the punch and putting him on the defensive. Forbes has had a little bit too much freedom to do what he wants to do early on. Another combination by Steve Forbes in the